Institute for Young Women Development in collaboration with CRA, which is the Combined Harare Residents Association, and also in collaboration with other CSOs that are gathered here. The main objective of this national dialogue on devolution is to consolidate and coordinate our fragmented efforts that we have all done to contribute to the devolution agenda and the devolution dialogue. So the whole idea was to tap into the power of the synergy to come up with a collective approach to ensure that devolution is implemented and enacted. And today, as it is the 29th of March, we know that we have a pending High Court judgment which lapses on the 31st of March. We think that um, this is a very timely conversation as we are taking stock and as we are asking the question that seeing that we have the judgment, how far are we with implementing devolution? Objective of this meeting to come up with a collective position, which is obviously pending finalization, but we managed to tap into the thematic areas, the various thematic areas which various organizations are interested in. And in particular for us as the Institute for Young Women Development, number one is very important for us, which is the quarter system to prioritize transformative participation. What we are saying as the Institute, we are requesting and we are demanding that we have a 50% allocation for seats in local authorities, both elected and non-elected positions, 50% for women, and of that 50%, we have 25% being allocated to young women, that is women below the age of 35 years. That is, we have six takeaway points, but for us as the institute, this is the number one, the number one priority, and that is very important to us. But I'm joined by my other colleagues who have other areas of interest in which they would wish to elaborate on. Our major concerns in this cluster, the first one is the enactment of uh, subsidiary legislation and putting in place an institutional framework that will allow uh, the implementation of, of, of devolution to take place. So we are pleading with government to expedite uh, the process of uh, the enactment of subsidiary legislation and put in place the institutional frameworks that are there so that uh, the devolution agenda will roll easily. Secondly, our interest is around uh, uh, economic uh, development at a local level that will also contribute to uh, the improvement of uh, quality service delivery at a local level by our local authorities and also our provincial councils that will play a major or important role in terms of uh, pushing uh, economic development. So in short, for us, uh, that are the major issues as residents associations. The young women are saying, number one, we should have laws in place that determine when the devolution funds are supposed to be with the local authorities because one of the key findings was that sometimes the devolution funds come way into the year and they would have been affected by factors such as um, in inflation and another thing is sometimes some of these devolution funds are not even given to the local authorities and there is legislation <coughs> that is in place that means that says that if the local authority does not receive the funds, it's forfeited back to the national fiscus. So now this does not actually benefit uh, the young women and their key concern was we should be able to contribute and to articulate what we want the devolution funds to be used for. I mean, of course, he highlighted the issue of the snow graders, but for the young women, they are saying, look, we know where schools should be built. We know where, where we need boreholes. We know our needs at the local levels, and that is why we are supposed to be asked about how the devolution funds should be used. Yeah, and remember the lines uh, for community-based organizations. And in this discussion, our main interest uh, is to deal with the uh, autonomy and uh, citizen participation. Um, as an alliance, we, uh, we believe that um, the discussion to do with the devolution deals with uh, two issues that are so pertinent uh, for citizens in Zimbabwe. One is to do with um, the decentralization of um, central government. We realize that um, most of the challenge that we've been receiving in the country has to do with that budgets decisions are done at the central level and when they are then implemented um, at, at, at the local authorities there are always challenges because the local authorities have no capacity to understand this budget especially that they would not have uh, participated at its 
inception or in terms of its details. Then the second issue that we are interested in is an alliance for community-based uh, organizing to do with the allocation and uh, displacement of funds. I think you are aware that um, already the devolution process is already being implemented where some of the budget has already been um, allocated in some um, some of the councils are, are now getting into their second or third badges. But it's clear that um, it has been difficult to, for these councils to account, which means accountability has been a problem, a, a, a challenge because of uh, lacking capacity. So it is an argument that we are bringing up aboard as alliance for community-based organizing. That devolution is important, but is, it, it becomes even more important if citizens are allowed to participate actively as rights holders and also linking up with the duty bearer so that at the local authority there is enough capacity which can account for the autonomy. So we don't want this autonomy to be given but at the same time there is no capacity because it can be abused, it can lead to challenges of accountability.